Zorse Multiprog ECU Cloning Magic, Hyundai Kia Sim 2K, 242 Full Tutorial You Can't Miss. Hey there, welcome back to the channel that every passionate automotive tech, curious DIYer, and pro-level diagnostic wizard is tuning into, your one-stop garage for smart, sharp, and solution-packed automobile diagnostics. If you're new here, don't scroll past, go ahead, smash that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and turn on that bell icon, so you're first in line for every future drop. Now here's the deal. This content isn't just about showing you how things work. It's about empowering you with knowledge, giving you that edge in the garage, and making sure you walk away with more confidence than you came in with. That's why we're not holding anything back in today's video. Before we dive deep, here's a quick but crucial reminder. This video is for educational and informational purposes only. Everything shown here, whether it's hands-on work, step-by-step -step processes, or software walkthroughs, is meant to help professionals, enthusiasts, and learners understand automotive diagnostics. No commercial use, no copyright infringement, just straight-up education. All trademarks and brand names, yep, they belong to their rightful owners. And please, always, and I mean always, follow manufacturer guidelines and your local laws when working on vehicles. Now, I've got a little challenge for you. Can we hit 1,000 likes and 100 comments in just 24 hours? Sounds crazy? Maybe. But if anyone can do it, it's you. Let's show some love to this growing community. And hey, if this video saves you time or money, or maybe even a headache or two, consider hitting the super thanks button. It keeps the lights on around here and fuels future content. All right, time to shift gears. Today, we're going deep into the world of ECU cloning, specifically tackling the Hyundai slash Kia Sim 2K 242 using the powerful Zorse Multiprog. Buckle up because this isn't just a how-to. It's the full breakdown from start to ignition. Let's begin with what this task actually involves. We're not just replacing an ECU. We're cloning it, transferring the essential PCM, powertrain control module, data from a donor unit to a target one, while leaving the transmission data completely untouched. Why? Because if your transmission is still in top shape, there's no need to disturb that data. We're just focusing on that engine side of things. And now, let's talk tools and prep. The Zorse Multiprog is your main tool. This thing can read and write ECU data like a pro. You'll need both your donor and original ECUs at the ready, plus a soldering kit, because here's the catch. The SIM 2K 242 doesn't offer a direct boot mode option. So yes, you're gonna be manually connecting to boot pins P1, P2, and P3 using the pinout from the SIM 2K 241 model, which conveniently shares the same processor. Cool workaround, right? Step one is backing up the donor ECU. With the Multiprog, you'll first select the SIM 2K 242 model, but follow the boot pin map of SIM 2K 241 to establish a successful connection. Then comes reading the internal EEPROM, which houses the immobilizer and VIN data, and the internal flash, which includes the firmware and more VIN info. Don't rush this. Reading takes around 5 minutes and 50 seconds for the flash alone, so patience is key. Once complete, save those files carefully, label them something like donor underscore PCM, so you know exactly what you're working with later. Also, make note, you can verify the VIN from the donor by diving into specific hex addresses, 1100 for flash and 7400 for EEPROM. In our case, we found a VIN ending in 104, and trust me, that little detail matters more than you think. Next up, reading the original ECU. This part mirrors the previous step. You're going to read and back up both EEPROM and flash data from the original unit. This is your safety net and your blueprint for restoring if needed. Then comes the magic, writing the data. Load your donor EEPROM and flash into multiprog. Write the EEPROM first, then the flash. Why this order? because EEPROM often contains immobilizer data and needs to leave the sink. To double-check everything, run a second write. Multiprog will skip unchanged data, making it faster and safer. EEPROM takes about 30 seconds, flash about 56 seconds. Then 
Confirm your work by rereading the ECU and checking VIN again at addresses 7,400 and 1,100. Still showing 104. You nailed it. Now for the big test, installing the cloned ECU into the vehicle. And here's the moment of truth. With the cloned donor ECU in place, the car fired up successfully after a brief pause on the security light. That's the green light you've been working for, literal proof that your clone job worked. Some extra insights here. Tools like OBD Star DC706 can also read SIM 2K241 ECUs. And since the protocols are so similar, you might even get away using that for 242 models too. Also, keep in mind, internet connection matters. The multi-prog syncs with a server during operations. So slow or spotty Wi-Fi can cause real headaches. And yes, boot mode soldering is absolutely non-negotiable. No boot pins, no connection. Period. Most importantly, make sure the VIN matches on both EEPROM and Flash. It's not just about identity. It's about system compatibility, security functions, and overall drivability. So what do I think? Honestly, this cloning method using the Zorse Multiprog is efficient, reliable, and scalable. Once you get used to the soldering technique and hex VIN verification, it becomes second nature. It's an invaluable skill for any serious technician or auto electrician dealing with Hyundai and Kia ECUs. But now, I want to hear your thoughts. What's your take on the SIM 2K242 ECU? Have you tried cloning it yourself? Do you think Zorus Multiprog offers more flexibility than other tools like DC706? Or have you faced any hiccups using different protocols? Let's get the conversation going. Drop your story in the comments. And if you think someone else could learn from this, don't keep it to yourself. Share this video in your groups, chats, or forums. If you're still watching and haven't subscribed yet, come on. What are you waiting for? This kind of detailed, hands-on knowledge doesn't come around often, and subscribing helps us keep producing it for you. Hit that button, leave a like, and drop a comment, even if it's just a great video. Let's hit that 1,000 likes and 100 comments goal. And yes, it's a challenge. But if this community is as sharp and supportive as I know it is, we'll crush it in no time. Until next time, keep learning, keep wrenching, and happy diagnosing.